Hello, Stu here from Mass Digital Tech Team. Today we're going to be taking a look at the PTZ presets, tours and patterns. Uh, we're going to be using a TIOC PTZ that we've mounted on a tripod outside temporarily just for the purpose of this demo. Um, so it might be moving around a little bit but should be fine. I'm just going to log into the PTZ and we should come up straight away with our live view, which we have. We've set up a number of boxes in this little scene here so we can use it to mark out preset positions and key points. We'll be using the numbers as our presets. Before we go into the presets, let's just take a look at some of the options that we have. From the live view, I've clicked setting. Now we're in the settings screen and we come up with our basic image settings. Uh, you'll see this on most IP cameras. Um, you log into them, obviously you can make adjustments to brightness and contrast, saturation, etc, etc. In a PTZ, you do have some various other options. Focus and zoom, for example. We've got uh, zoom speed, so we can choose how fast that PTZ will zoom in when we're using a zoom function. We've got PFA, which is predictive focus algorithm. So the PTZ will try and use the correct focus for its level of zoom. We've also got digital zoom, which we can turn on or off. Uh, and what this will do, if you turn digital zoom on, it'll allow you to use the PTZ controls to use the optical zoom. And then when it reaches the end of the optical zoom, it will use the digital zoom to stack that on top. So it allows for zooming in on the pixels of the image that you've already got. Um, obviously the optical zoom is actually moving the lens of the camera to provide true zoom. On this particular camera, because it's a TIOC BTZ, we've also got various illuminator options. We can use the standard IR, we can use the white light for full color, or we can use smart illumination, which by default uses the IR mode until it detects a human or a vehicle, and then it will turn the white light on to provide that color information. Right, so let's go into the presets. So we've got the PTZ function on the left hand side, we we'll click on the function and we've got our simple PTZ controls at the bottom there. At the moment, we've got a box on the right hand side, which is blank. And here we can add our first preset. So we click add. It brings up a title of preset one. We can rename that if we want to. We can call that box one, for example. And what we'll do is we'll move our PTZ to the position that we want it to be in for preset one. So I'm going to try and zoom in on that box. There we are. So I just want to make my adjustments. So I'll change the speed of that. That'll do. I click save now, this little floppy disk icon. So now we've saved preset number one called box one in this position. I'll add another one and this is going to be box number two. Okay, so now we've got two presets set. What we can do as well, we can, if we use the live view, so box number three, what I'm gonna do is just show you a little, instead of moving it manually, I can actually use this little position function. I highlight the uh, magnifying glass there, and instead I drag a box, and it's gonna move the PTZ for me to that position. Then I can go back into the setting add the pattern, uh, preset, sorry, call it box three, save that one. Same again, we'll do number four. And one of the reasons we're doing this uh, preset first is because we need to use the presets to create our tour. So tour is essentially moving between the preset positions that we've already predefined. So we've set up five presets. Uh, if I just click box one, it's going to take me back to that preset position. Likewise, box three, back to the preset position. So these are now saved within the camera and I can call these up and it quite rapidly moves between them. That's presets. That's quite simple, quite straightforward, also very useful. You can call these presets back up. Somebody from a remote center can call them up uh, rather than having to manually move them around. It can help when there's things like network delay over the internet and things like that. 
uh, if you're struggling to find the same place or it takes a little bit of time because you've got a lag on your controller things like that if you've got your predefined positions which are the important positions for your pzz to look at you can literally recall those presets so the next part down the list we've got tor which works quite nicely because that's what we're going to do next so we've now set our presets we can call our presets from one to five whenever we need i can now also create a tour so a tour is a number of presets in a predefined order uh, with the ptz that moves between them as time goes on so we want to add a tour you can give it a name we'll leave it as tour one for now uh, and first of all we're going to add our first preset so it makes sense we'll go preset number one for key point number one we can choose a duration. So in this particular PTZ, our minimum duration is 15 seconds uh, and the speed by default is set to seven, which is quite a quick speed. Um, we'll leave that for now. We can put in a duration if we wanted to for this PTZ to sit in that position for a bit longer. We could put 30 seconds, for example, but for the purpose of the demo, we'll keep it minimum. Key point one is set as preset one and it's also set as our first start tour position. As we go down the list, we can add a number of different points, but it will make sense for this demo that we pick our presets in order. As you can see, it also shows you what that position is as you select them from the dropdown. So as it is right now, it would go box one, two, three, four, five in that order. But if we want to do it in a different order, we could swap them around. So once you've got your tour positions and key points set with your presets, all you do is click save and I can click this start button to see what happens. So it should go box number one. It should sit there for 15 seconds and quite quickly move to preset position number two. What I would suggest is that you watch, watch it through at least once. You can then choose to make any adjustments with the speed and the time that they sit in these positions. You might find that one of the positions is more important than the rest and that it dictates that it needs more time in that position. You might also want to track between two of the presets at a slower speed so it can move from 0.2 to 3 in a slow motion for example. And you just change that speed from here. As you can see it's doing what it should be doing and it's just moving between the positions that we've predefined. When you're happy with that, like I am, just click stop. The next thing that we want to talk about is patterns. So a pattern, relatively simple to set up. The only downside to it is that it can be a little bit judgmental on your control. <laughs> Blackbird just decided to come and say hello there. So a pattern is essentially a recording of a movement that can be played back. It works very similar to a tour. However, the tour needs the presets to be set first. A pattern, just records your movement. When we record a pattern as well, you don't need to necessarily stop in each preset position for 15 seconds like you do with a tour. A pattern can keep a continuous movement going. A pattern, all we need to do is choose the pattern number, first of all, so you can have five patterns on this particular PTZ. And all we do is we click setup, and then I can start recording, and then we can play that back. So we're gonna start recording now. And then we'll just stop that recording. So now that's set as pattern number one. We can choose to just start that recording and it should do exactly as I did. And essentially that's now playing back what I previously recorded. So if we want this PTZ to perform one of these functions, either a preset, a tour or a pattern, once we finish manually controlling the PTZ, what we'll need to do is set an idle motion. So idle motion, we can enable idle motion and we can choose whether we use one of our presets, one of our tours, a scan or one of our patterns. We've recorded what we need in the pattern. We've set a preset and we've de designed a tour. Choose which one of our presets, for example, I'll choose a preset box number three after one minute it will go back to that position. So when we've taken control of it, we've moved this PTZ around, we've done what we needed to do, we've zoomed in and done whatever we wanted to. After one minute now, 
So that should go back to position number three, which of course is looking at box number three. So we'll leave that for a minute. So there's the minute up and it has gone back to box number three, just as we should. So one more thing we need to look at really on top of the idle motion, time task. So time task is very similar to idle motion, but this allows us to set schedules for different events or different effects, should I say, to happen at different times of the day. So if we turn off idle motion so that it's no longer going back to box number three after a minute, time task, we can set four different tasks with different times. We can have a preset position, for example, during the day, let's go eight while five-ish. So we've set a time period of eight o'clock in the morning till five o'clock at night. Its time task would be to go to box number one at the moment, or box number two, for example, after 30 seconds. Now, task number two could be something completely different. It could be a pattern that we've just recorded. And that could be every day from 17.01 until midnight. And if we enable that, depending on what time of day it is, it'll either do the preset position or it would do its pattern. So as you can see, the PTZ moved itself to box number two, and that's the position it would stay in until we get to five o'clock. When we get to 5.01, the pattern should start, just to test that. I'm just gonna change this to 16.59. No, actually I can do 17.00. And 45. So in around 15 seconds, the time task for the pattern should kick in. There we go. Pattern has started. Simple way just to test to make sure that your time tasks are actually working. Just by changing the time on the PTZ. Just make sure that you change it back to normal afterwards. So that's how to do it using your laptop, logged into the PTZ, as we'd always recommend. Now we're gonna take a quick look at some of the same options, but from the NBR, should you not have a laptop, or should the end user have control over those presets, tours, and patterns.